Welcome to Makeout Sessions, your seven minutes in heaven brought to you by Kiss and Tell. Today, we'll be discussing mindfulness and motivation with author and Great Day Washington host, Ellen Bryan. So, let's make out. Come inside, take off your coat, I'll make you feel at home. Now let's pour a glass of wine, cause now we're all alone. I've been waiting for my so just let me hold you close to me. Cause I've been dying for you, girl, to make love to me. Ellen, welcome to Makeout Sessions. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here, Amy. I'm so happy to have you here. So I thought you'd be the perfect guest to join us today for a couple of reasons. Um, number one, with your daily uh, minute motivations, and we'll get into that with your um, that are on air as well as on your website and your new book out. So I'd love to discuss both. Tell me a little bit about you know your motivation or or your journey into this uh, motivational space. I would love to. I think for most people, um, a lot of your foundation starts at home. And I would definitely say I kind of got the bug to do something um, positive from my parents. So my my dad would always tell me when I was growing up that there are dreamers and there are doers. It's okay to be a dreamer, but unless you're going to put the work behind it, you'll never see those dreams come true. And I think it's because as a kid, I was always wanting to be on Broadway and be a big star. And I would like pretend in my bedroom that I was on TV. And I think he just wanted me to make sure that I knew there was going to be a lot of hard work behind doing that. And then the other thing that I always remember my mom saying when I was younger, because when I was 11 years old, my oldest sister, who was 17 at the time, was struck by lightning while working on a golf course. And 20 years later, um, she still is not able to talk or move since. And so it radically changed our lives. And especially when I was younger, I would always want to say, why did this happen to her? Throw ourselves a pity party. What if she wouldn't have been outside after the storm went through? Like, I would always just ask all these questions. And my mom would let me cry for a little bit. And then she would say, all right we're done and we're not gonna look backward anymore. We have to move forward. And so from that, I became a national spokesperson for lightning safety and tried to turn it into a positive and tell my sister's story. I just told it in a TEDx actually, um, as many times as I can to use her story to help others and motivate others. So it all kind of came together with Minute Motivation. I just wanted something positive to put out every morning on social media. And then I, I spun it into a book as well. It's just a one minute, you either read or watch something that usually I'm going through in my own life of just, okay, here's something to anchor your day on and to hopefully inspire you in your own journey. Absolutely. And I mean, it totally can resonate. Your minute motivations totally can resonate with anyone. I often think of, you know, my motivational journey as a founder and over the past few years, how I've had to look inwards to get that kind of drive and um, just the strength to move forward and succeed. But I thought, gosh, these days that we're all quarantined and lacking that human to human contact, everyone's probably needing a little extra way of kind of putting things into perspective, getting that extra like skip in their step and mm -hmm. and also mm -hmm. finding ways of just keeping their spirits up and being in the present. So I really found so many of the topics that you cover to be so timely right now. Mm -hmm. um, now, as far as mm -hmm. mindfulness, what are the kinds of um, other things that you're doing while you're at home in these days? It's so different right now. And I've found a lot of my minute motivations are geared toward all the emotions that we're going through every day, which can be wide ranging and that's okay. I keep telling people it's okay to feel however you're feeling right now. I know mm -hmm. the day um, the NBA announced that they were suspending the season. I normally um, will do a meditation, a sleep meditation to fall asleep. I normally do 10 minutes and I'm asleep halfway through it. And that night when I went to bed, they had just suspended the season 30 minutes into a meditation. I still wasn't asleep. And I realized right then, okay, you're going to have to be more mindful as you're going forward because clearly this is having some sort of internal effect on you. So exactly. meditation has been really big for me, finding that space to like kind of let go of all the uncertainty that you keep flipping in your head, but you can't get anywhere with. Okay. Um, I've also tried to get a routine. I've been working from home in our broadcasting area here. And so trying to find the routine at home and then the routine when I'm back in studio. And I also started journaling. I've always journaled just emotions. I have a journal for just getting everything out. 
but then also one to give me more focus to the day. Okay, here's the top project I'm going to work on. Here is, you know, what I'm the time I'm going to quit working because it's so easy to keep working at home um, and then plan out the day accordingly just to give myself some sort of structure so that I don't feel like I, I don't even know what day it is. Right. That it's it's hard at home. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, I've always been that work from home professional, but having that structure, especially when everyone else is working from home, it's that much more important and it's that much more important to check in with yourself and also making sure you're getting like that work, the right work life balance, because that's something that if it's all happening outside of the house, things can tend to kind of blend together and really trying to like be purposeful and like keeping work to work hours and having your different spaces set up so that you can have like the clear identity of what these these um, objectives are. Now about spaces, I'm noticing as we've been chatting the space that you're seated in and it looks very zen and calming. So tell me a little bit about this and is this where you're doing your, your meditation? Normally, yes. Um, so when we were house searching this time last year, I kept saying, I just want a room dedicated for yoga and meditation. And I kept looking for that space. Well, this is our sunroom. And my fiance, luckily, he said, okay, this can be the yoga meditation room and also exercise room on the other side. The problem right now, especially when you need this room more than ever, is we also both are on air. We both are um, broadcasters. And so we've had to be broadcasting from our homes. And this kind of made the most sense because it's a little bit off the house and you can close a couple doors here. And so now this space, like I'm looking around all this camera equipment and lights and it's just been overtaken by work. And so the, so the space that was so peaceful is now hectic. It's a little less zen from your view, but from ours, we're still looking and like, you know, well, thinking that you're seated yeah. in the middle of a yoga studio. So, right. um, well, well good. that's, yeah, at, at least, at least we're seeing it that way. So, um, <laughs> now you met your fiance and I know the last time that I was there at Great Day Washington, you guys had just started wedding planning straight after, it was like a week after Valentine's Day. So, um, yeah. tell me kind of how that journey is coming along considering COVID-19 and any any wrenches that have kind of gotten thrown into your planning process. Oh, where to start? No, we were very slow to start on our wedding planning. We want something small and pretty simple, maybe um, a party later, maybe not attached to the day, but not really a reception or anything. So most places you talk to, since it's something smaller, you don't have to book a date years out. So we were thinking at one point last year, we actually talked about March, and I've said so many times oh, how lucky we are we didn't plan for March because right now that's where all of the cancellations have started. Um, so then we, we went on to September. And at the time that I saw you, we were just about to book the date. Like We had gone and we were at the National Cathedral, which um, I think is where we're going to get married. It was the original plan. Um, it's where my fiance, he went to St. Albans right there. So it kind of ties it all together for him. And we had met the pastor and we were really starting to get things together. And then all of this happened. Um, I had gone wedding dress shopping once and tried some things on. And now I feel like everything's been suspended, but they actually won't even um, look ahead and book dates. I think they've had to cancel so many things. They're trying to figure out okay, how do we make up all of those and reschedule those. So they told us, they said, we're going to have to wait until we have a better idea of what the future looks like before we even set a date. So it's yeah. been tough right now because you can't do anything. But in some ways, since we didn't have anything set that we haven't had to send out invitations to say, OK, we're moving the date. We, did, we didn't have to do anything that. So I just have to suspend it from my mind right now and say, OK, it's fine. You'll get to it eventually. Exactly. Well, I must say that the National Cathedral is definitely in the right mindset in that they're not trying to push the couples to reschedule or lock them into um, new dates. And what we've been saying with all of our couples who have been, um, you know, kind of, I'd say, indefinitely rescheduling is that, you know, just hold off on putting your deposits down. It's good to kind of keep your mind open. It's good to definitely keep those open lines of communication with your guests. But, um, but don't try to really secure in any date until we have some more clarity on really what's happening out there. And so you guys are totally like in line, at least with the cathedral. So that's that's a good start. Um, and the fact that you're going to have an intimate wedding anyway, which is really key because, 
you know, a lot, the other kind of big challenge that people are facing right now is, well, if we sent out save the dates and things, how are we going to chip away at our guest list? Will people understand? And to be honest, guests are totally understanding, but we're predicting that weddings are all going to be intimate for quite some time once they start happening again. Yeah, and I mean, high risk guests are just very unlikely to be able to attend, you know, or maybe they'll be able to attend via a video or a better digital communications type of platform. So we're looking at addressing those types of things with Kiss and Tell, but I'm really glad that you guys are at least in a good position. You're not heartbroken over, you know, having to reschedule twice or three times. And and you'll be able to tackle these challenges, you know, when the time is right. And it's really good that, you know, your venue, um, at least for the ceremony, is well in line with that. So I really, um, I really appreciate having you on today, Ellen. Thank um, you. For our viewers, I, I know that you had mentioned um, your... Your Minute Motivations are available. They air both on Great Day Washington and on ellenbryan.com. And then as far as your book for the viewers, um, is that just available on ellenbryan.com as well? It's available there, especially if you'd like a signed copy. I do send out signed copies, but it's also on Amazon. So if you'd rather it just come nice and quick. Right now, the post office is <laughs> a little bit slower of a system. I had a heavy amount. I gave a virtual speech. And had a heavy amount of orders and i said i normally get it out in two days and like it might be a little bit longer this time yeah yeah no i think i think amazon is definitely the uh, most dependable way of shipping or receiving orders these days well great um i appreciate you being on and chatting with us on the uh, mindfulness topic and um for you viewers who want to um hear more from ellen and i you can tune in to our Kiss and Tell Makeout Sessions After Party on Instagram Live will be both on at Kiss and Tell Official and at Ellen Bryan. Uh, so looking forward to you tuning in and definitely bring some questions, whether they're about mindfulness uh, or even wedding planning. We're happy to chat and you can participate in our uh, digital spin the bottle game. So looking forward to seeing you guys there.